What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome back to episode three in a series about building a real world application for both app stores using Bravo Studio. In the previous episodes of this series, we've talked about the project, done a quick tour of Bravo Studio. We've prepared our Figma file with Bravo tags and containers and complex functionality and we've imported that thing into Bravo Studio. In this video, you're gonna get a deeper understanding of the data library section inside of Bravo Studio. I'm gonna show you my Airtable database, how it's set up. I'm gonna show you how to make an API request to that Airtable, as well as the basics of APIs, how to customize those APIs, how to implement those API calls into a collection of data, and then how to bind that data to your designs. At the end of the video, we're gonna open up Bravo Vision. You're actually gonna be able to see and interact with your app, and it's gonna plug in all of that live data into your templates. It's basically gonna be ready for publishing. All right, now we've successfully prepared our Figma file and imported it into Bravo Studio. Here we are inside the Bravo Studio app and our Cardboard Nerd board game app is there. I'm gonna go ahead and click into it and what we see is our actual project and it has all of the screens represented in our Figma file except for that icon and the splash screen. It doesn't need to show the splash screen because there's nothing really to do with it. You can't input any data into it, but all the other screens we can. Up at the top, you see we have our screens. We'll be able to go to the publish tab in a little bit and talk iOS and Android. We have a notifications set up and we have settings for the app in case you need login functionality, want to connect to Firebase, or send notifications, we can do that as well from here. When I'm on my screens and I click into any individual screen, you'll see now we're at the data binding interface. This allows us to connect data to the individual elements in our screen. Where is it pulling this information from? Well, it's pulling our, this information from our data library. Here in our data library, we have a a bunch of different data collections. This one is for an expeditions guide. This is uh, our foodies application. And this is our cardboard nerd database. And now it's time to introduce you to the database functionality we're using in this project. And I encourage you to use for your project because it is great. I'm using Airtable. If you've never used Airtable before, it's really similar to Google Spreadsheets except in my opinion, it's a little bit more powerful and it's a great pairing for Bravo Studio. Databases are basically just big spreadsheets and so Airtable is a really fun visual way to do that. Um, you can organize things really well. So here I am on Airtable. Um, you can go back to all of the Airtables that I have. I can click into this specific Airtable, this spreadsheet, that's all it really is. And what we have is uh, a bunch of different views that I've set up, uh, starting with the all games view. All I have is a bunch of different rows and columns. So the title of the game, the rank of the game, I can check whether or not it is a hot game or not. Ratings, player counts, times, designers, all that stuff. We have the mechanics or the type of game that it is in kind of these multi-selects. We have links to images and we have thumbnail images that I've just dragged right in. Some of them have actual images that I'm gonna try to implement later, but for now, it's, it's, this is just a big spreadsheet of information. Um, and this is all the information that's gonna appear inside of my application. We wanna connect this data to Bravo Studio so that we can bind it with our designs. Let's go back and see how we do that. Now that we have our Airtable and we understand what Airtable is, I'm gonna come back to Data Library and I'm gonna create a new collection. Even though I have one going straight to this Airtable, I'm just gonna create another one and go through the process. When we click on it, it's gonna give us two options. Do we want a custom API or should we use the Airtable wizard? Let's try both really quickly and see what they do. I'm gonna open up the Airtable wizard and it's gonna ask me to enter my base share link. That gives me a little animated GIF of what that looks like. I'm gonna come up to share, click on the base. I'm gonna get the link like this. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pop it in and press continue. Then I'm gonna get my API key, which is a secret thing. I'll be blurring it out. You won't be able to see mine, but you should get your own. And the way that we do that is to go up to our account and go to our account and then down to our API key. So here we go. I'm gonna go over to my account, over to the account section and I'm gonna grab this API key. Now that I have it, I'm gonna pop it in, press complete the form, and the Airtable wizard is gonna go out and fetch all of the details, the records, 
the collections, the different requests, and it's gonna finish the job. I'm gonna press OK, and here we are. Now here's what it's grabbed. The Airtable wizard is always gonna create two things. It's always gonna create a list view and a detail view. Okay, so we have a list view and a detail view. The list being all of those lists inside of Figma that we wanna create, like this is a list, right? It's gonna grab all the information and it's gonna be ready to kind of duplicate them. Then you have the detail view. It's gonna grab all of the detail screen, everything I need to fill in a detail screen. But it's gone ahead and it's created two other ones, news detail and news list. Well, that's really interesting, what's that? Well, if we head over to our air table, you'll see that I have two separate sheets. This one is the board game list and this one is the news list where I have news articles, kind of like my own little blog without having to have a WordPress or anything like that set up. I just pop in the title, an image, a summary, and a few other elements, and it's gonna grab all that information for me as well. Now that you know what information's been brought in, each of these have some really similar things. Any one of them that you click on is going to have a request URL, and you can see that request URL is my actual API call. And then it's saying, hey, just get everything from the board games list. Whereas this one is gonna say, hey, get everything from the board games list, but I want you to get the individual elements, identify the individual elements that are there as well. It's already gone ahead and it's found the authorization and put in a bearer key for us. So that's nice. The Airtable wizard's gonna do all of it for us. Let's come back to our data. Let's create a new collection, but this time let's go with a custom API. Let's call this Jesse test uh, board games and test for the YouTube series. A little description. We'll press save. It's gonna bring me right in to the data library interface. I have a request, it's a blank request, right? So what do we wanna do? We wanna call this the board games list request perhaps, all right? And see how it's saying it's a get request. We can do post, put, patch, and delete requests if we get more complex later, but right now we're just getting the information from the web. And so this time what I wanna do is go up to help, I wanna go down to my API documentation. This is gonna open up the documentation for my API, for my Airtable. You can see on the left-hand side, we have the board game table. We also have the news table. So if I want the board game table, I'm gonna to go to list records, right? Cause that's what I want. And I'm gonna grab everything inside of this example request besides the parentheses. I'm gonna come back to Bravo Studio. I'm gonna paste that in and then I can get rid of Anything after this question mark is an extra call or an extra attribute that's putting on to the end of our API request. So I don't want max records of three, I want all of them. So I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm going to say, hey, view all games. Now, why is it saying view all games? Because we have different ways of viewing things. So if we wanna view every single game, that's great. But if we just wanted to view the top 100, we would have to replace that with you guessed it, top 100, case sensitive, just as it's written. All right, now that we have our API in there and we have customized it the way that we want to show us the top 100, let's press send and we're gonna see a problem. It gives us an authorization required. It needs to be able to authorize this. What does that mean? Well, for any API request, you're gonna have to authorize it with your API key. We can go up to our database information to do this, go over to authentication and come down to bearer and then we need to put in our API token. Well, let's head back over to our uh, Airtable uh, API documentation, and we can see that it says bearer your API key. Now it's not showing anything right now because I have to click show the API key. I'm gonna blur mine out, but I'm gonna go ahead and uncover that. I'm gonna copy it, come back, paste it in, press save, and now let's press send again and instead of an error, we get a bunch of information that's been given to us. What is all this information? It's all of our information from our database. Now we get to select, hey, we want all of the data records and we want the ID specific stuff, but we want each of the individual ones. Like for instance, we want the link to find it on Amazon. We want the description. We want the rating, the designer, the category, the playtime. We want all of those to be available to us so that we can plug them in to our 
uh, our actual screens and in the data binding screen. Now, if we like what we've done here, we want to also create that detail screen like we are able to on the other one as well. We'd have to go through a little bit more of a complex process. I'll put a link down in the description to a video from Bravo that will show you how to create your own custom API calls uh, instead of using the Airtable wizard. But for my instance, the Airtable wizard worked just fine, and then I was able to customize and duplicate. Let me show you my actual data library for my application. You can see I have my list, and I have my detail page. I have a top 100 and a hot games, and I have a news list. I'm getting the news table, and I'm looking at a view of posts. That comes directly from my database, the news table, and from a view of posts, not the drafts but the actual posts instead. Now that's my data library. Let's go back to the project and see how these things get linked up and you'll see how everything kind of comes together. I'm gonna to click on my games detail page and when we go ahead and select what database we wanna use, I'm using my Cardboard Nerd database and I'm pulling from which Git request do I want. I wanna pull from my actual board games detail. So all the information for each individual game. Now you can see I have my image up here on the top. Here's something really interesting to note. All of our containers are stacked up on top of each other, just like they were in our Figma file. This is why you have to call everything a container. Open up that container and we have our asterisk with the word image data. When I click on that, you can see that I'm getting it from, you bet, from the actual image category, right? Let's go down and look at a few other ones. Our title container. I'm gonna open up our game title and sure enough, it's pulling data. We get the little icon that says it's currently pulling data from the database, where from? From the title. I could mix that up and put the publisher name there if I want to, but I don't want to, I'll leave it there. Each of these, if we open up each of these containers, they have a bunch of other things in it, like they have, for instance, uh, different SVG icons, like my little icon star, or my stat rating, or different things, colors that are happening in there. But each of the ones that I've labeled with an asterisk and the word data, I just go ahead and select that and bind it to the data from my API or from my data collection. Once we're done setting up our data library and making all of our Git requests and then binding our data to our actual screens, we can go into the App Store and download Bravo Vision, either the Google Play Store or the iOS App Store. And when we open it up, Bravo Vision is the way that we're gonna test our design. And so you can see it's opening up right now. I have all of the projects that are in my projects panel online. I can click on the one I want to, like my Cardboard Nerd project, and Bravo Vision is gonna go ahead and open it up. Now we're not gonna see the splash screen. You can't see the splash screen in Bravo Vision. It's gonna present you with its own. But I can see my intro screen. I can hit enter now into the application, and I can see it pulling all of the information from my database. So we see it all repeating. I can click on an individual element, and it leads me into the game view. You can see my sticky elements like my button and my uh, top left and right buttons, the go back and the share button, they're there. All the information is plugged in. If I tap on an area, it's gonna open up the video. If I tap on a button, it's gonna go do what it needs to do. If I navigate back and forth with my navigation, you can see the loading animation from Lottie that's playing. And I get active states on all of the different uh, tab navigations. Everything's scrolling underneath my top anchored navigation and everything is looking good. If I still saw empty blank templates, I would know that there's a problem. I need to go back in and bind the information. In one of my list views, if I see an empty listing or an empty table cell, it's possible that it's because my air table has an empty row inside of it. And so I can go manipulate any and all of those elements. Now what's really cool is it's gonna be pulling the information real time inside of Bravo Vision. So if I go back to my database here inside of uh, Airtable and I go to hot games, I can see the list of hot games and at the very top is a game called Canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck Canvas and then I'm gonna go over to hot games and see that it's there. I'm gonna pull to refresh and see that that game goes away. It's all connected. It's pulling directly from my database already. And now if we like everything that's here, we are ready to publish our application to both the Android Play Store and the iOS App Store. And that's it. We've bound all of our data to our designs that's coming from our database in Airtable 
using our API requests by either using the Airtable wizard or custom API requests. Doesn't matter which way you do it as long as it works for you. And really at the same time, you've learned the basics of using APIs. If you can find the API documentation to any other site that has it, you can grab that API, get an API key, and then start looking for all the list and detail records that are inside of that API. There might be some small differences on how it kind of looks and how it's presented to you, but really across the board, APIs are all the same. If you know how to make an API request to Airtable, you know how to make an API request to Airbnb or Spotify or any other place. It's important to note there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing. I chose to create a lot of different views inside of my database and then customize that API call. You can do it a different way if you want, but this is the way that worked for me for my scenario and my project. At this point, our project looks perfect inside of Bravo Vision, and that's exactly how it's gonna look once it gets published to both of the application stores. One thing to note, you can download Bravo Vision on an iPad or an Android tablet. You should do that because when my application got rejected from the App Store, it's because there was a small spacing issue on one of my buttons on the iPad version. And so go ahead and check that for both before you submit. That way you don't get rejected and have to resubmit. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design, development, and no-code tools just like Bravo Studio. So stick around by hitting that subscribe button and hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. I hope you're making amazing things. And I hope you're getting excited because this thing's about to go live and yours can too. We'll see you in the next one.